This is a smoke stopper, and it is an essential tool for protecting your quadcopter against dumb mistakes like short-circuiting things together. When your quadcopter has a fault in it and you plug in a smoke stopper, instead of the smoke coming out of your quad, the smoke stopper lights up and you know that things aren't right. Now, the normal way the smoke stopper looks is like something like this but there are some disadvantages to doing it this way. For example, with the bulb hardwired, if the bulb ever does burn out, and eventually it does, then replacing it means building a whole new smoke stopper from scratch. In addition, this smoke stopper doesn't have an on-off switch. And an on-off switch is super useful, for example, if you need to hold down a bind button and plug in a battery at the same time. That requires more hands than most people have, and having an on-off switch really makes that a lot easier. So today, we're gonna make this. This is a smoke stopper box. And if you're looking at this and going, that is such overkill, why would you go to that trouble? This is not the video for you. But if you're looking at that and going, oh yes, that's really cool, I wanna build one of those, then I'm gonna walk you through the process how. And this is much more than just a simple smoke stopper. It has interchangeable bulbs. So if you burn out a bulb, it's easy to pull the bulb out of the socket and plug it in again. And it is switchable. So you can choose whether to use the low beam or the high beam element. Low beam is good for micro quadcopters. High beam is good for bigger quadcopters. And you can have the bulbs be in series. If you're using them with a 6S battery, you can choose to put the two bulbs in series, which lets you safely use a 12 volt bulb with a 25 volt quadcopter. See, there's that little 6-4 switch. So Let's go through the process of making this all work. So in case it's not obvious, the box that we're using is 3D printed. Uh, there are links down in the video description to where you can get the files if you wanna 3D print this yourself. Or if you don't have a 3D printer, you can use a service like BMC 3D. In fact, I've got another video where I tested a three, or three or four different 3D printing services and decided which was the best. And you can find a link to that up in the upper right corner of the screen if you wanna do that. Or if you're just not into the whole 3D printing thing, I mean, it's just a box with holes in the lid. You could rig something up from the hardware store pretty easily. Uh, at the end of the day, it's the electrical wiring and parts that were sort of the trickiest to figure out and maybe the hardest for someone to duplicate. So uh, there's gonna be links to all the parts that I used down in the video description, and I'm gonna show you how to do all the wiring, whether you 3D print the box or not. The biggest challenge for me was to come up with the electrical diagram for this circuit. And I wanted to be able to switch the bulbs into both series and parallel, and I wanted to be able to switch between the high beam and the low beam. And I basically just banged at it like a chimpanzee trying to program a VCR until I came up with this diagram, which I was sure was correct, but it wasn't. This was incorrect. Here is the final diagram that actually turned out to be correct. Now, if you're an expert at electrical diagrams, that's all you need to know. But for the rest of us, let's build it one step at a time. And the first thing to do is to insert these uh, light bulb sockets into the lid. They just sort of squeeze in and then twist fit to uh, have a little tension on them and you're good to go. We're gonna put two of those in and you're gonna install these before we install the switches. The first switch we're gonna need is a double pole, double throw, on, off, on switch. And that means that it's got a center position where it is off. It's a three position switch and it is double pole, double throw. So you can see it's gonna have six uh, little lugs down here on the bottom. Links to all of this down in the video description. We're gonna go ahead and insert this into the bottom hole on the lid. That is the low, off, high hole. Very conveniently, the nut that is used to hold the switch in place is the same size as a prop wrench. So you can use your prop wrench to tighten this down, just get it good and snug so the switch doesn't move. And you see me sort of <laughs> very carefully making sure that the switch is straight because that's the kind of guy I am. The next switch that we need is an on-on single pole double throw. And if you look, you'll see this is a triple pole double throw. It is more poles than we need. I bought it by mistake and I didn't wanna buy, I mean, you just use one of the three poles, that's fine. If you wanna buy the exact same thing as me, uh, there's a link in the video description. If you wanna buy the correct thing, that's fine too. This one is gonna go into the six slash four hole, the upper hole. And here's what we got at this point. The three position switch is down in the low off high and the two position switch is up in the six four. 
Next, we're going to install the XT60 bulkhead, and to do this, we're going to need an M2.5 by 6 millimeter screw. M2.5 is not something that you probably have laying around, so you're going to need to buy an assortment. And we're going to be using these bulkhead XT60 connectors, which again is probably not something you have laying around. As you might have guessed, there are links in the video description. The XT60 gets inserted from the inside of the box and the screws screw into nuts, which are pre-installed in the XT60. You may also have noticed I've got the wires pre-soldered here. I would solder on the red wire, but not the black wire. That was a mistake for me to pre-solder that. I didn't show you soldering on the red wire. I'm using 20 gauge silicon wire here, solder on the red, but not the black. Now at this point, I'm gonna tin and put some flux on the lugs of the switch and on the red wire. And then I'm gonna solder the red wire from the XT60 to the center lug on the bottom switch. Here's the back of the bulb socket that we're using and you can see this one is labeled ground, minor, and major. That's the ground wire, the low, and the high beam element. Now, the one that I'm actually using, the second set that I bought, wasn't labeled, so you may wanna label this. And don't worry about the color of the wires. This is not a polarized circuit. There is no plus and minus for light bulb. The current can flow through it either direction, but you're gonna mark your socket like I'm showing here, minus, low, and high, so you know when you're working with the low beam and the high beam element. Then we're gonna strip and tin the wires coming from the sockets. I didn't show you that part. You can probably figure that out for yourself. Here I'm tinning the lugs on the switch we're gonna add some flux to that, and then we're gonna solder the low and the high beam as shown here. The high beam is gonna get soldered to the bottom lug, and the low beam is gonna get soldered to the top lug. Uh, the box is upside down right this minute, that's why it looks like that instruction is backwards. I'm just turning it upside down because I'm left-handed, and that makes it easier for me to do it. What, wait, no, the, that's not the right, Joshua, that's not the right wire, Joshua. That's the minus wire, not the low beam wire, Joshua. Oh, Joshua, what are you doing, man? That's the wrong wire. Uh, here he goes. He's going to figure it out. Oh, oh, whoops. Dang, Joshua. <laughs> Let's fix it. All right, so here's the correct way to wire up so far. Bearing in mind that the box is upside down at this exact moment. There we go. Now it's right side up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tin the center lugs on this triple pole double throw switch, but if you are using a single pole double throw switch, then there will only be one row of lugs. We're only gonna use one row of lugs. I'm only using this switch because I had already purchased it and I just didn't wanna waste it and throw it out when it would be perfectly good. We're gonna tin and we're gonna flux these and then the negative wire from this uh, socket is going to go as shown here. Now in order to test that this is functioning right, I'm gonna take the negative wire from my XT60 and I'm gonna solder it to the lower lug on that switch. You should not do this because we don't want, we want it to go to an output XT60. We don't wanna just loop it back in. We, this is not how you're gonna finally do it. But I am showing you this step because I am gonna use this black wire coming from this lower lug later. I had actually forgotten <laughs> about the X the output XT60 where you would plug the quad in and I was just so focused on making this box that I basically just made a box that has two light bulbs that light up that wasn't actually a smoke stopper. That's what you're seeing me do right now. So we're soldering this negative wire onto this bottom prong and we'll see that wire again, but you shouldn't do this because you don't actually need to loop it back to the input XT60, that's pointless. Next, we're gonna take a short length of spare wire and we're gonna solder from the top lug of the top switch and we're gonna go over to the center lug on the right side of the bottom switch. And then we're gonna take the high and the low beam elements from the second socket and we're gonna solder them to the bottom and the top lugs of the right side of the switch, the same way as we did with the left side of the switch for the other socket.
This is the part where I realized I had forgotten about the output XT60 to let me plug into the quad. And I'm gonna work around that by desoldering this negative wire from the input XT60. You will not have it there because you didn't put it there in the first place because I told you not to. So there we go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the negative wire from the second socket and the wire coming off of the bottom of the top switch. And we're gonna twist them together and then we're gonna join them together with the negative wire for the output XT60. Pay close attention to these two black wires in this photo where they're exactly coming from, okay? If you're gonna use heat shrink, let's go ahead and slide some heat shrink up these black wires as far out of the way as possible. And then here I've got a battery lead from a dead battery, which I almost never have a reason to reuse these because I'm always putting battery leads on quadcopters and I never need the other side. But I've cut the battery lead off a dead battery and it's gonna be perfect for this, uh, this purpose. So I'm gonna solder those two black wires. So let's get your head out of the way, Joshua. I'm gonna solder those two black wires to the um, positive wire of the battery lead. And that's gonna be a little confusing at first, but remember, we're putting this all in series. So the negative-ish side coming out of the light bulbs goes to the positive-ish side. Anyway, don't let the wire color fool you. We are soldering the black wires from the light bulbs to the red wire on the XT60. That is the correct way to do it. And then we will shrink down this heat shrink. And here's a great little still image of what we've got working so far. Double check your wiring at this point. Finally, we're gonna put some 20 gauge black wire onto the black terminal of the output XT60. And we'll add a little heat shrink to that just to keep everything safe. And then we are gonna solder that over to the negative terminal on the input XT60. Next, we're gonna pull that XT60 out as far as it'll go, and I've given you a little tab and some holes to put a zip tie for strain relief so it's not like tugging on the wiring inside the box. This is, I just think it's best practice to have some strain relief anytime you've got a wire going through a bulkhead. And here is the final wiring and setup for you to double check against your own setup and make sure that nothing is gonna go poof when you plug it in. Now, when I first tested mine, I found that the low beam elements didn't make good contact and the low beams didn't turn on. So I took a little screwdriver and I just kind of bent these prongs inwards, as you see me doing here, and that helped them make consistent contact. Now I'm going to test this and I'm going to test it using a smoke stopper in case I have screwed up the wiring anything and there's a short circuit. And what I've done is I have used an alligator clip to short circuit the output side so I can now test how this would function if we had a quadcopter. Uh, so I'm going to put it on the 4S and when in the 4S only one bulb should light, on the 6S both bulbs should light. So that seems to be working correctly. And then on the low beam we should only get the low beam, on the high beam we should get the high beam, I had to jiggle that bulb a little bit. It wasn't making good contact. So here we've got low beam, good. 4S, single bulb, 6S, both bulbs. Uh, off, off, high beam, high beam. Everything is working correctly. Yay, the wiring is a success. Everything is great. The last thing we have to do is install these threaded inserts so we can screw the lid on. Uh, we're gonna set the soldering iron to its lowest temperature. 600 degrees Fahrenheit is fine. We're gonna put the threaded insert on the tip of the iron and then we're gonna gently press it down in. It'll melt its way into the plastic and then hold it with a little screwdriver so as, you as you pull the soldering iron out so the soldering iron doesn't pull the insert back out. And then the whole thing, well, I made it look easy, but you might wanna practice a couple times before you, if you've never done it before. Here, let's watch Joshua do it one more time. Just right there on the hot iron, press it straight down in as best you can, gently and slowly, don't overdo it. Then hold it in place with the soldering iron and pull the, so or with the screwdriver and pull the soldering iron out. There you go. And then we'll use some M3 screws and every quadcopter aficionado has about a zillion of those laying around. I'm even, even using some nice black ones to make it kind of look nice with, against the red, but um, we'll use some M3 screws to hold the lid on and the job will be done. 
And that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've really enjoyed it. This is the kind of nerdy video that I love to make. It's not going to get a zillion views, but it is very near and dear to my heart. And if it's near and dear to yours, which it must be if you watch this far, I, I just want to thank you. And I'm glad I see you out there, nerds. Um, what you're looking at right now is another video that I might publish it to my channel someday. But for now, I'm publishing it just to my patrons because um, that's a, it's, it's me modeling this box. And if you want to see that, you can join my Patreon. There's a link in the video description. Um, as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. You can get access to some exclusive content like this, um, uploads of my live streams. Uh, I upload them as a podcast to the patrons and a few other small things that patrons get exclusive access to. There's a link to that in the video description as well as everything else you need to make everything that you see in this video. That's going to do it for this video. I'm out of here. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying, everybody.